it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer and I've not reviewed a Tiny Rebel beer for a long time. I think the last time I reviewed a Tiny Rebel beer was the 303 or 313 Craft Lager. I think I thought it was okay. But we're back. We've been to Sainsbury's. Don't go there often. It's a nine mile journey for me. But when I do go, pick up loads of their beer and loads of their food. So you might see a few Sainsbury's reviews. <laughs> coming up over the next few days. Uh, this is Tiny Rebels A Little Peachy. It's a peach smoothie IPA at 6.2% ABV. Now, before I get this can open, let me just get this bit out of the way. I'm, if I seen this in the supermarket to drink, on a personal level, say I wanted a few beers, let's go to Sainsbury's, I want to sit in my garden for the afternoon, having a few beers, then I'm going to get this out of the way straight away. I wouldn't be buying this beer. This beer is definitely not, not for me. And I get asked the question quite a lot in the comments box of my videos. Well, if you don't like these beers, why do you review them? Why do you drink them? Uh, but that's the whole point, isn't it? That's the whole point. I've reviewed nearly 10,000 beers on the channel. I can give a kind of fair reflection on this beer. And I can give my own personal points of view and reasons as to why I probably wouldn't buy this beer. But I think my beer reviews are fair enough to say, well, hey, if you like a peach smoothie beer or if you like something with ice cream concentrates in then crack on enjoy it's not for me to kind of like all i'm doing is standing you're giving my opinion on a beer so let's do that let's give my personal opinion on a little peachy peach smoothie ipa 6.2 percent abv it was three pounds a can in sainsbury's I remember Tiny Rebel, a bit like I remember Brewdog, a bit like how I used to remember Magic Rock. They were a fantastic brewery. When Tiny Rebel launched in, I'm going to say 2012, 2013, oh my goodness me, they were killing it. They were making some of the best beers, or actually I'm just going to come out and say it, they were making the best beer in the whole of Wales. It was terrific stuff when they first come out. It was wonderful. And then, I, I, it must have been their Pineapple Express. It must have been a turning point that they brewed a beer with adjuncts, sold lots of it, made a, probably made a a load of margin on it, a, lo a load of money, and thought, hey, there's our future right there. And you can't blame them for that. If that's the direction the brewery wanted to go in, then that's the direction the brewery wanted to go in. It's not for me to overly complain about it. Do I miss the old Tiny Rebel? Of course I do. Of course I do. And I'm sure many other people miss the old Tiny Rebel. There's a little bit of sediment here in the bottom of this glass. Look at that. Quite happy with that. Quite happy. So we got a two finger white head. It's a hazy, light amber coloured beer. It's been out the fridge about 15 minutes just to give it a chance to warm up a little bit, just to appreciate those flavours. Let's get the aroma. Wow, that's just peach. It it just smells like a Solero. I've been on holiday many times. I like a Solero on holiday. If I go to Spain, Solero all day long. One of those kind of orangey, peachy kind of ice creams. Beautiful on the beach. Wonderful. But do I want it in my beer? Nah, not really. But then again... I can understand why some people would. 
So for me, not much malt, not much biscuitiness, not much in the way of hops at all. No spiciness, no pepperiness. A million, million miles away from what the Germans are doing or what the Belgians are doing, you know. Good, top quality beer. I call this lazy brewing. Lazy, lazy brewing. And just making a quick buck, you know, just just profit for the sake of reputation. Just smells a peach. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Ah, it's a headache. It's a headache beer. I can almost feel it. It almost like it, it kind of slides down my throat and then it kind of almost creeps up to the back of your neck. Do you know them neck headaches you get from maybe a bit of dehydration or maybe you've been to a beer festival and you've had one too many and you, you kind of like click your neck. You're like, oh, I feel like I've got a headache coming. That was instant, instant. It's like it, it slid down my throat. It's like it went straight up to the back of my neck. This beer is full of nasties. I'm just going to come out and say it. This beer is full of nasties. This is full of probably sweeteners, ice cream concentrates, brewing syrups. If you're wondering why you're waking up in the morning with a smacking headache after a few beers the night before, then look no further than beers like this. If you want to drink clean beer that when you wake up in the morning, you want to wake up with a fresh head, drink the German stuff. I had a few Francis Kerner last night. Francis Kerner Heller beers. Um, Keller, Keller, Heller beers. Francis Kerner Keller beers. And they were fantastic. Clean, crisp, drinkable. Woke up this morning fresh as a daisy. If you drank three or four of these, you'd be waking up with one of those nightmare headaches where you can't lift your head off the pillow. This is purely brewed for profit. This is purely brewed. I mean, people, obviously people love this stuff out there. I don't know who, I never see people buying it, to be honest with you. But you've got the likes of Vault City in Scotland. I mean, they're not brewing it. They're actually using fruits, Vault City. But people buy, whenever you go to a beer festival, you see people queuing up for, the queue's massive for Brewers like Vault City and you're, you're like scratching your head. You're wondering why. Why would you want to drink that? Why, why would you want to kind of like do that to yourself? Fruit smoothie IPAs. Why? Why like torment yourself like that? Drink the problem. And then do you, know, do you know the worst thing about... I'm going on a bit of a rant here because the beer is terrible. The worst thing. I went to Brew London a couple of years ago. And like I said, the Vault City bar was full. It was, they were queuing. And, it was, and then you're walking around the corner and you see Kronbacher, Kronbacher unfiltered. Kronbacher bought the unfiltered lager and there's no one there. And you're like, you know, as a beer purist, as someone who's drunk thousands and thousands and thousands of beers, I, I can't understand why they're not queuing up at the Kronbacher Unfiltered Bar, enjoying Unfiltered or at the Budvar Bar, drinking great Czech Sars Hop, fresh Sars Hop lager. I can't understand it. It baffles me. It really does. Maybe it's because these beers have been around for such a long time now that people just just go, eh, you know, it, it's been around forever. It's always going to be there. And, and people are always chasing the kind of new new fandangled thing like you know i won't be drinking the rest of this um it will be a waste three pound a 
can in Sainsbury's. I find it completely undrinkable. Um, this will be going down my sink, unfortunately. It's terrible. Just con ice cream concentrate peach. It's like if you melted down the outside of a Solero, the orange bit on a Solero, and just told somebody to drink it. Or, or when I got a, a tropical fruit squash and asked someone to open the cap and you just chug in from the concentrated squash bottle. It's terrible beer. Nothing, nothing to be said about this beer either, other than on a mission to bring the good times with a hint of beer. Yeah, definitely a hint of beer. Um, yeah, there's nothing to read. It's just bump. It's just marketing stuff on the back of that can. Uh, rating for a little peachy. It's definitely not for me. It's a two out of ten. Two out of ten from Real Ale Craft Beer. Completely undrinkable. Thanks for watching. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.